So, uh, hi everybody. As uh, as um, uh, Madeline and I got that great standing o ovation, uh, uh, so I appreciate that. But tonight, I just um, I wanted to talk a little bit about business. One of my um, favorite topics to talk about in the whole entire world is talking about how to grow business, how to develop business, and just talking about um, just talking about things that some business owners know about, things that business owners don't know about, whether you're thinking about a business, starting a business, um, growing a business, those are all things. So I think I um, am blessed to be able to, to be pretty uh, comprehensive of everyone in the uh, audience. And I think that if I uh, just be able to cover that, then I, I, I think we'll have a good time. Like it was mentioned, you can ask questions at any time, uh, feel free. It makes it more interactive and definitely means I won't be talking for the entire time, but I'll be listening as well. And uh, hopefully if you have suggestions, even learning from you. So let's get right into it. So as was talked about, I've helped and blessed to hold a number of uh, positions, deputy mayor, Champaign County Black Chamber of Commerce president, a business owner. I have uh, worked at Kraft Heinz. I worked there for 13 years, worked for a congressman. Um, also, I've operated as a business uh, independent contractor for Uber, Lyft, News Gazette. And so I just wanted to, I really don't want to get into a lot about me because I want to talk about a lot of what people want to talk about and here is the business side. I have held a number of positions and what I will tell and I think uh, business owners would identify with is that in business, your past experiences actually help your business experiences. And what I've learned is a lot of the things that I used to do, particularly um, I was a sanitation auditor at Kraft in the manufacturing environment. It actually has helped me understand uh, a lot about business. And I follow a lot of the practices that I learned um, over the years from different businesses and just learning from different people. I believe that every opportunity is a business opportunity and an opportunity to learn, whether you're going to McDonald's, uh, whether you're going to patronize a restaurant, whether you're going to, um, you know, go get an accounting service. You know, what I've been learning how to do over these past seven years is train my eye to understand and be able to just take and glean from business owners all over the country. And so you can, any interaction that you have, you can learn from. Even uh, walking into McDonald's, you can, if you were a restaurant owner, um, they used to, and still people do to this day, when they want to open up a business, they actually enter or they just work for that business for X amount of time, just to learn the ins and outs of the industry that they're in. And it's not a bad idea. It's actually an amazing idea because what I found is that what you think business is about, sometimes it's not and sometimes it is. And sometimes you can take all of those collective experiences that you have um, gained from other experiences and you can apply them directly to your business. So that's a little, 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 little tip, little hack uh, that I'll be, you know, sharing throughout. So... What made me want to be a, 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 a chamber president um, was that I would attend a lot of, first of all, I think economics and understanding the economy, the economy is essential, whether you own a business or not. That's just, just, um, just really, really important. Uh, understanding just the basic understand, your, a basic understanding of how any economy works is critical. And guess what makes up an economy? A lot of businesses. And so there are micro businesses, as you know, there are, and those are businesses that, you know, we call them um, hobbies or people do them on the side. They may, um, or it's, it's, extra, it's something that people do not really full scale, not full time, but they generate an income from it. They generate money from it. And so those are our micro businesses. And you know, just because you work a business part-time doesn't mean that you don't generate a lot of money. It just depends on the industry that you're in. For instance, if you're in a construction business and you do roofs after you uh, you clean gutters 
after you get off your nine to five, it can actually um, put, it can actually produce a lot of money if you allow it to, to accumulate. So just because you have a business, they call it side business, doesn't mean, it means this, this conversation is just as much for you as someone who's doing a business full time. And so these type of understandings, when I first got into the business world, uh, I had to pay a lot of money to, 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 <laughs> I paid a lot of money. Um, I have an e-commerce business with my wife, uh, where we basically sell, um, basically we have an open brand where we pretty much sell everything. Um, and there wasn't a lot of resources, at least at the time around me that I thought that I could glean from to help me as a startup business. And so that's what really got me interested in working with other businesses. And that's also what got me interested in working with the Champagne Public Library. Shameless plug for the Champagne Public Library and all they do for the business community. Because there aren't a lot of free resources. And when you're a startup business, you your every dollar is 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 important. It's 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 critical. And so when you don't have a lot of um, access to free resources, you end up trying to do a lot of stuff on your own or just trial by error or trial by fire is what I like to say. Um, but, you know, since then, seven years, there's been a lot of things in our community that people still don't know about. And so that's why this partnership is pretty exciting. There weren't a lot of uh, access at the time, at least I wasn't aware um, a lot of resources, when I just mean resources, I mean financial resources for small businesses. And since then, I've been blessed to learn about LISC, L-I-S-C, um, Axion, uh, Justine Peterson. And those are all um, institutions that work with smaller companies. And they actually work with small companies that... Um, may not may or may not have the best credit history so they work with companies that have um you know 500 credit score 500 plus credit score now don't hit me on the exact i know it's 500 ish so don't get me on the 500 but 500 ish and so they work with companies and they not only provide loans the beautiful part about these institutions is that they provide education so it's one thing to get a loan for five or $10,000. It's actually another thing to be able to use that so that you can grow your business. Unfortunately, a lot of times what we see, and you'll find me dive into these rabbit trails, so bring me back in anytime. But a lot of times, it's not just about getting the, the, the loan. You know, that's the immediate need, right? It's actually about understanding how to use that loan or grant for uh, the growth of your business and being able to, 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 to be able to springboard so that you may not necessarily be in an emergency situation um, the next time you go back to that lender because you can refinance or whatever, like with uh, SBA or um, SBDA. I mean, those are very, those are things that I didn't know about when I first um, started my business. And so those are places that, like I said, again, they work with um, smaller size businesses, even larger businesses, but they specialize in those $10,000 loans. Now, grants will always be in high demand, but maybe not as much as the supply. And that's always the challenge, particularly for small businesses, um, especially those in the year one and year two or just the idea phase. But I can tell you one thing, Google is your best friend. In fact, at the end, I'll share a couple of uh, searches that I did through um, the city websites, um, Champaign-Urbana, as well as um, just a normal grant. Just look for, you can just Google grants for startups. Google actually helps out a lot. And I will say that, um, which I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but one of the things that you want to make sure, especially when you're working with the cities, uh, your local community, the good part about it is that you're working with your local community. If you go to like the city of Champaign or Urbana and, you know, let's just say you don't get that grant. The good part about it is you can go to those, in, in, uh, those departments and you can 
just kind of say, hey, how can I do better? How can, what can I do to be, you know, uh, eligible for the next grant round of grants? But small business grants are definitely tough. They have it at, uh, post COVID or and even during COVID offered a lot more to small businesses, but they continue to be, uh, like I said, high in demand, but not always as much in supply. And so that's why places like Lisk, Axion, Justine Peterson, working with your local bank, uh, bootstrapping uh, become critical because if you need finding, I mean, businesses, lifeline of businesses is, is, is customers and resources. And you need the resources to get the customers, you know, vice versa. So that's a really big deal. Information. Um, so again, going back to why, you know, this is why I thought that working with the public library, Champaign Public Library, and also just becoming a president was important was um, a lot of information is informative, but it's not always applicable. And that's sometimes the challenge is that when you're sitting through a presentation and you, as spe specifically, if you're out, it's after work hours or your small business, you know, it's important that that information is not only informative, but that is applicable. And so, again, just a little tip that I was thinking through is whenever someone's presenting and you're giving your time, make sure you ask questions if you have questions and then make sure you get their business card. I think that's a critical piece. Now, want to get into the bread and butter of, of the presentation and just give some common sense, but not so common sense things because what's familiar to one person may not necessarily be, uh, it may not be known to someone else. And so in a day-to-day -day business, just talking about just day-to-day -day business interactions, it's really, really, really important for us to manage our businesses, manage our business. Now, people say, of course, that makes, that's, I mean, manage your business is, 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 that's common, like I'm managing my business. But what I found is that it's a difference between, it's a really big difference between selling products and being a part of your business. Most business, small businesses are one to two people. So it's a difference between selling your product, maybe even going to the bank and dropping off deposits and managing the everyday pieces of the business that would actually help your business grow. And so a couple of things that I, as I'm thinking even through for myself is, number one, as a business owner, you want to establish a schedule. And you can use a planner, Outlook, Google, whatever. You want to establish a schedule for your whatever your business activities are, not necessarily, not just for just, you know, from open to close, nine to five, my, those are my business hours. But what happens at that, what happens during those hours? What happens after hours is what most of us forget as business owners is that we still have to go through things like bookkeeping and, and inventory checks and all of those things. And so that's what I mean by really managing your business and looking at it from a holistic standpoint, not just the day-to-day, hour-to-hour, like your hours of operation, what happens, but really what time do you spend um, bookkeeping? Because bookkeeping is critical. We talked a little bit about grants and loans a lot earlier. Well, some of those grants and some of those uh, loans, they, they, they want to know your tax statement for the last one year or two years or whatever. Well, if you haven't filed your taxes because you were busy man working your business or, you know, during those days of operation, well, that may knock you out of maybe even getting a loan or a grant that you were actually um, qualified for. So things like that's what I'm really talking about. Let's talk about what does it mean to manage your business. Like if you had a schedule, particularly for a small business, every what every minute, every second, every hour counts. What are you doing during those during during those particular moments from from moment to moment? It's important to establish that because I can tell you things like bookkeeping and making sure that you documented all of your receipts making sure that you know you 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 know you're not going to run out of inventory for the next week you know those things can get 
like I said, when you after nine to five and you after the business, you 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 turn off the the cloak, pull the curtain down. Business is closed. Most of the time, so many business owners are so tired that the last thing they want to do is put their receipts in the enter their receipts in the cam scanner or go to work with QuickBooks or, you know, that's the last thing they want to do or we want to do. And that's why a lot of times, you know, when it comes to, you know, bookkeeping and, and sprucing up and inventory checks and, you know, getting rid of old inventory. And that's why, or, or just again, the day to day stuff that happens that a lot of people don't really think about most business owners. When we think, we think specifically about how much product did I sell? We think about things like our employees. We think about things like, you know, maybe we think about the macro, but the business is actually made of macro activities, like overall activities. Like if you're a restaurant selling sandwiches, but we don't think about the micro activities like bookkeeping and receipts. Um, great point to great mate, great point to or, or, or to, to talk about setting up an accountant and ensuring that you regular that you're regularly updating your software. Setting up an accountant, setting working with an accountant. Some people say, well dang, I make four hundred dollars a year. I'm just throwing a number out or $4,000 a year, 10, well, I can't afford an accountant. Well, depending upon every business, every piece of advice, there are stages that come with it. So when I first started business, um, I started with a um, more of a person, most accountants are, uh, I started with a, a, a tech, not necessarily an accountant. I just work with someone that did taxes. So, and there's a level. So there's a level of understanding with whether you're just, you know, working with a, a family friend or a family member that understands QuickBooks and an accountant. Well, the difference is, and particularly a, an accountant is going to give you advice on how to manage your, but your money throughout the year, particularly if you're checking in throughout the year. And someone that does taxes um, on the side or, you know, someone that, does, that doesn't necessarily do business taxes well, they may not necessarily have all the information that an accountant would have. And understanding your money, understanding your money, understanding your money, and I keep saying that understanding your money throughout any time of that year is important. And you know what? Again, that's something that you have to schedule out because I can promise you after you've worked 12, 14 hours in the business, you know, whatever, whatever business that you're in, a lot of times you're just so tired. The last thing that you want, all you want to know is if you're in the green and you can pay your bills. And that's where a lot of us um, lie. And that's why uh, we're not looking at our numbers. We're not tracking them. And it's, that's so important to do. Um, one of the things I learned was making sure that I'm checking in with my man. And I don't have a large staff. Maybe, maybe when I first started, it was just me and my wife. So it was just checking in with us. So, you know, a lot of times as small business owners, we, th we don't necessarily value that and we don't document that. We think that we have to get to 20 employees or 30 employees or 40 employees before we start doing things that everyday businesses should be doing, which is checking in and documenting, checking in and documenting. So it's not enough to just be passing by in the grocery store and say, hey, I think we ought to do this or taking a walk. We actually have to document these things because you're documenting your path. And a lot of things get lost in, 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 in conversation. So you could say something, but the way your brain processes things, if you just say it in passing, say, for instance, maybe I need to order some plastic, you know, plastic bubble wrap. Well, maybe I said that in passing, uh, my business partner heard me, but the, bu the bubble wrap did get ordered. That's why you have to write things down. That's why you have to write things down. And when I say things like multiple times, it's like me just saying it's important to do, write things down. Uh, keep a vision board. Keep a vision board and a business plan. Now, a lot of times people think of the business plan and there's so many things, ways now that you could go to, you could Google business plan and there's so many, there are even templates 
and plugins that you can plug in a business plan. But a business plan actually is more important um, than just getting a, a, a loan from the bank. And most of the time, that's the only time that we really talk about business plans is if we're going to raise capital. But the business plan really is your personal roadmap. So I don't care if you wrote it on a on a on a Charmin's. I would not advise write, writing on a Charmin's toilet paper or writing it on a paper towel. But you need to be have somewhere where you're writing your vision and you're writing your course because in life and in business, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times you're gonna think why did there are gonna be some amazing days and you're like, man, this is why I do business. I love it. And then there are gonna be some days where you're just like. Why am I doing this again? And your vision, write the vision, make it plain. Write the vision. The vision isn't just there for when times are good. The vision is there so that you remember why you're doing, why you're doing when you don't feel like doing it. And your business plan is ever evolving. Most of the time you get a business plan, you get it put together, um, and that thing sits on a, on a table somewhere or sits on, in a corner of a garage. That's not what the business plan is for. It's for you to, to keep on marking and, 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 and tracking your route and so and, and in life or in this business life. So you can use a Google if you're trying to just write things down. I mean, Google has a, a whole lot of resources for just everyday people, even you know business owners. You can put it on a Trello board. Personally, that's what my wife and I, who I is my business partner, we're actually going to the Trello, the Trello board. We like that a lot. And as you grow, the reason why you got to write stuff down is because as you grow and become more successful, your schedule is going to just fill up. And guess what? You're going to forget some stuff. You might forget some stuff. And so writing things down, you know, when I was younger, I could just remember everything. But you know, now as I'm, you know, been blessed to, to get older, um, just for, turned 40 this year, awesome year. Um, but as I get older, I realize that, man, I got so many things that I, to do. And if I don't write it down, I'm going to remember all the big stuff, maybe some of the small stuff, but I'm not going to remember the everyday small little things that make up the business. Uh, check your POS system. There are a lot of business owners who have restaurants. There are a lot of business. There, there are a lot of all your your POS system uh, like Square. People use a Square card. You know, a lot of so us small business owners use the Square. Remember, people like you got to you take Square. And there are a lot of things now that you have that a lot of uh, systems that have come up before uh, since then. But Square has uh, data outside of again the everyday transaction. Most people just use Square. I'm just picked on that POS system because it allows them to collect money. You know, it's a safe way to collect money through the, you know, credit card, swipe the debit card. But they actually, and that'd be a great training in the future, just using Square as a, just things that, you know, the information when you're reviewing that information, such as how many customers did you serve that day? Um, what did they want? If you're running, I'm just picking on the restaurant industry. Uh, how many did you sell? How many cheeseburgers did you sell? You just put out a special. Did people buy the special or did they buy just everyday cheeseburgers? See, studying those things allows you to be able to make decisions in your business down the line, especially in times like economic times like this, where dollars are, 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 are stretched and they count. They allow you to make, studying your numbers and your customers and your and, and your and your sales allows you to know where to spend money and where not to spend money. Maybe guess what? No one loves your mama's meatloaf, so you might just take your mama's meatloaf off the menu and you know serve just a regular old just meatloaf. Maybe they just like old school meatloaf. Maybe if you're in the in the in the in the hair industry. Well, maybe, you know what? People don't like square boxes. You know, they don't want a square or a zombie on your head. Maybe they just want a plain old school army, cut it all off, and get an old school line. Though that POS system allows you to study what actually happens in your business. So just don't, those, this is, that's the micro part of business. And like I said, 
Most people are in love. We are in love with selling products because products generate sales. And as long, our only metric for success in business is how much we sold and what we didn't sell. But there's so many details in the middle that sometimes I think that we miss that could help us get to what we even want to do more, which is make more sales. Uh, check in with your employees. Check in with your employees. They, they used to do that when I, I worked at uh, Kraft every so, every so often. And it's important, even though, again, again, um, you might be, it might be checking in with yourself or check most business owners, one or two people. So you're looking at the, hey, you look fine, but no, have an actual check in, ask them about it's And then if you have five employees, 10 and people, what I think people forget about employee versus employer is that we need each other. The employee needs the employer, the employer needs the employee. Without the employee or the employer, the relationship doesn't work. And in our society, we kind of demean those relationships, but they're actually valuable relationships. So learn about your employees. You know, learn about, you know, I'm not saying you got to sit there and go through a, you know, massage therapy, you know, I mean, maybe if you're on a, a massage salon, maybe, you know, maybe if you're a masseuse, maybe, you know, maybe that's something that, you know, you offer as a benefit. I don't know. But the point is, check in with your employees. They're people. We're people. And I think that sometimes we demonize each other. But the reality is we need each other. So it's important, you know, if you're an employee, uh, maybe they're not performing at the level that you think they could, you know, and maybe there was an event that happened in their life that just, just, and, and th this is with the thought process that we're performing. Well, maybe there something happened in their life that just kind of got them down and they don't, they're not much of a talker. So, you know, you don't have to even talk about the event. Things just like, hey, how are you doing? And being genuine, you know, uh, not being fake about it, but being genuine is a big deal. Stay in tune with your employees. Uh, stay in tune with your family. Uh, as a small business owner, oh, there, you know, there are so many things that hit us that I, I promise you, if your fam, I mean, you can miss so many things. You're trying to, you know, that's why that's go back to that establish a schedule. Is so important because, you know, you're trying to, you know, everybody thinks that your schedule is so flexible as a, a small business owner and you have a level of flexibility, but I don't think that it's as flexible as people think, you know, just because we set our own hours doesn't mean that I can just do this, this and this, or there won't be a business, but it's important to not be so busy that you forget about your family and the people around you. Because they could be, and most of the time are the drivers of why you're doing things with your, with your, why you're in the business in the first place. Stay in tune with your family and then, you know, have honest conversations with them. Because especially if they're children, I'm not saying you got to expose them to everything, but they often forget that, you know what, I'm a person too. You know, hello, people, we're all people, right? But Checking in with each other just a lot. If you had a tough day, it's okay, I think, to say, man, I had a tough day. You know, sometimes if you don't say it, people don't really, they don't pick up on it. So checking in with the people around you. It's the reason why you're doing what you're doing. It's important. And then lastly, uh, not, not lastly, but just take time out for yourself. You're like, I work 14 hours. What does that mean? Well, um, it means maybe taking a 20-minute walk. It means setting some time where you gather your thoughts. If the first thing you do in the morning is run to the business and get to working, I promise you that the business will grind you. The business will not will, will outwork you. It will grind you. And then, you know, when there are events that happen in your life, because you really haven't taken that time out for you, you haven't checked in with your family, your employees, the people side of this thing, you'll, it, it, you'll just, I, don't, I mean, just me personally, I will tell you that you implode. I, I'm a talker, but I'm not. I talk when I have to, but there are a lot of things I do keep to myself. And when you don't take that time in, it builds, it builds, it builds until you explode. And people are like, oh, what, what happened? Well, it's just because I didn't take time out for me. 
And if you're in the business of serving everyone but yourself, then you're not in the business of even serving those people because at some point, at some point, you're going to tap out. And I wrote that these are business essentials. Get in the habit of, these aren't just great ideas, like I should do this. These are things that really help your business. They, some of them, and I didn't say, I've talked about product a little bit, but these are the small things that keep your company going. And you have to set time to do them. You have to set time to do them. Again, you have to set up time to do them. It's just that critical. Uh, in your business, it's important to know your numbers. And what I mean by a lot of people, again, when you're in business, if you make, it's a difference between gross revenue, overall revenue, and profit, which you take home after you pay it, everyone, and that everyone includes you. You are an employee of the business. Um, it's important for you to know what does it take for you to survive. And this is particular, this is not just for people who are, um, uh, in business, this is particularly when you're, because at one point, remember, I worked at Kraft, but I also, but I also worked, um, I worked at Kraft and, but I also worked in other entities. So what does it take for you to survive? Then I really want to hit that hit, say that again, what does it take for you to survive when you're thinking about transitioning from your um, business part-time to full-time? You got to really know that. Because it's a difference in that business doing well when you're bringing in another income and that business doing, how is that business doing when it, and when, when your lifestyle, because remember the business is two different entities, you, there's you, and then there's the business, there's you, and there's the business. So if you don't have enough to survive, take care of you, then you're definitely not going to have enough to take care of the business. And you have to look at it that way. So you have to look at it. What's your number? So if it takes you, your personal household, $3,000 a month individually to survive, you need to bring in $3,000 from your business for it to survive. If you're depending solely on the business, then you, then you have to bring in $3,000. Now that's one number. Now, what does it take to make sure the business is operational, right? And, and now I'm not talking about even profit. What does it take to keep the lights on? What's it take to be able to buy and purchase products on a consistent basis? What's it take to, to hire a person? What's it take? What, what, what's that number? And I know this, I just threw an arbitrary number out there, to be honest with you. But 3000 is what it takes to take care of your household. And $5,000 is what it takes to take care of the business to break even. So that means that you have to bring in $8,000 a month at least $8,000 enough at least for the business to survive and for you to survive. You have to break, you have to look at that two organ. Now when you, it's like two different separate buildings, even if you're in the same house, you have a, uh, you're operating your business out of your house. You still have to think of it that way. What does it take for the business to survive and what does it take for you to survive? And if that number is $8,000, now you have to ask yourself, that are gonna get you to that number every month. And that's something that I, when I first started business, to be honest with you, transitioning from craft to full-time business, I really didn't think about that as much. I thought, well, I got a de decent 401k and you know, I've been running this business for a little bit. I know what I'm doing, but I really didn't have a, a, a real number until I started to get into the business and realize that, oh my gosh, there are two different things. There's me, and then there's the business. A little bit more, lastly, great advice. Start slowly and build incrementally. Start slowly and build incrementally. I can go on and talk on and about that. Start slowly and build incrementally. And that's in every phase. That's a business, whether you're a startup, whether you're in the idea phase, or you're in a business thinking about expanding startup because sometimes you could just be um let's say you have a brick and mortar and you're doing well at one location and you decide to go to a different location depending upon the, 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 the you got to see if you're just shift are you actually growing a customer base or you're just giving easy access to your business for your existing customers that's a big one 
Are you growing? Like, are you expanding a business base? Or are you just making it more like you got the same customers, they just get to patronize your business. And I guess that's okay. But when you're paying for two buildings, three buildings, four, five, it's important for you to understand if you're actually, you know, if that expansion is actually growing your business. Uh, learn your product, learn your customers. Learn your product, learn your customers. Some ways to do that, old school way is to, you know, to ask, hey, how you doing? How was the product? How was my service? Uh, there are surveys that you can do. In the digital world, uh, like I said, go back to that POS system like Square. You can collect emails. And email lists are pretty cool as long as you don't like, like basically spam or, you know, spam your, your customers into the fact that, you know, they just like look at it, don't care anymore. But like, what if you really have like a, maybe once a month or, you know, maybe once a week, just depends. Maybe you have a real special and you want people to know about that special. Well, if they really like your product, maybe they want to know what the special of the week is. That's a way to engage your customers. Text alerts are great. Again, in this society, sometimes people learn something that becomes overutilized. Um, and some you don't want to get it. You don't want to send so many texts out that people will just hit the stop button. So once a week, maybe once a month, depending on if it's just something you're starting. But you really get to engage with your customers. And, you, you know, sometimes in the busy world, they forget. And so those things help them remember. But learn your product. Learn why people buy your product. You know, I was uh, selling a water pressure regulator. True story. Didn't really know what it was. It was something that my my wife had, and I was just packaging it. And and after we sold a few hundred of them, I'm like, hey, maybe I might want to learn why people even use this. Can't make this up. Happened a few years ago. And found out that people use these water pressure regulators in the RV world. Well, that's good to know. So then you start studying, what do people in the RV world want? Again, learn your product and learn your customers. No matter what stage of business you're in, get organized. No matter what stage of business you're in, get organized. Well, no matter what stage of business you're in, get organized. Because organization or lack thereof costs you money. If you have to buy a tool, how many people have bought a tool five times over because they couldn't find it and they needed it at that moment, got tired of looking for it? You see, those are the type of things that are critical. That costs you money in the business. Work on a reserve funding, return, retain earnings is what they call it, in the accounting world, no matter how small it is. It's always good to see a profit. If your profit, if you, if you put away $1, if you look at the profit first book, they did say pay yourself. And one of the important pieces is pay yourself. Even, and I'm, this is what I'm talking about outside of, when I say profit, I'm saying outside of paying yourself. So this is like your, your business's savings account because you need that rainy day funding when things uh, may not necessarily be like you thought they were gonna be, or work out. Uh, be ready to pivot and plan to pivot. Didn't know that. Thought that as long as sales were good, I was good. We were good. The business is good. But things in the, in the business world, I mean, look at what we're going through now. Inflation, we're going through um, oil prices. I mean, there's a lot going on right now. And so even, the, even if the product doesn't change, the environment changes. And the way people... Use your, interact with your product changes. Back in the day, it was just walk in the door. Now you've got your, you know, cell phones, you've got computers. There's a lot of ways that people engage and that can help you make money and resources. And it can help you in tough economic times. Uh, I have a recession. I'll, I'll, if you guys invite me back, if the Champaign Public Library says you're cool, Will, I want to invite you back. We'll talk about that recession-proof item because I want to, Make sure I leave some time for questions. But basically, a recession-proof item is uh, something that people buy no matter what. You know, uh, at Kraft, a, one, a great example of a recession-proof item for them was macaroni and cheese. Cheap product, people loved it. They love the macaroni and cheese. Recession-proof item is something that sells in any economic environment. So with that... Uh, I know I've jabbered on a lot. 
I wanted to make sure that I left some time for questions and and uh, just maybe I pick your brain, maybe you pick mine, or maybe there are no questions at all. So with that being said, that is my presentation for the evening. And I thank you all for, uh, for, uh, for tuning in. Well, thank you so much, Will. We do have a question that was asked earlier. And the question is, I am looking to add trade lines to build business credit. Can you offer insight on that? I do have a Dunn's account, but that's all. Um, we have we have done stuff like um, we've opened accounts with, um, gosh, um, BP, um, which is a gas company. Um, we've opened lines with them. Uh, we used to have a trade line with, uh, um, at the time, I think it was Office Max or Office Depot. We opened up an account with them. Um, there are like Uline. That's a great place if you're ordering supplies and to 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 uh, to get an account. There are a few other places, but those are the ones that I think up right off the top of my head. The key to it is just making sure that um, you pay. Make sure that you don't like if you're going to buy a product. Be consistent in the sale, buying it, the purchase of the product. So you can't do it like. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've studied this, but um, just if offering advice is just making sure that you purchase something on a month, regular basis and then you pay the bill off so that you actually take advantage of, you know, uh, be able to take advantage of building your, your business credit. It does take a while. True story. Can't make this up. Um, in my first year, I mean, I, I read a lot that, you know, hey, I want to do what you're doing. And I actually paid someone a lot of money to, <laughs> to they had, a, they offered a service. It was legal, legit. Um, when you're in business, people will offer you a whole bunch of services. But what I found is that just be patient. It does take time to build that business credit up. So just be patient um, and just stay, be patient and be consistent. That's what I would offer to that. Great. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have other questions? And I'm also more than happy to unmute you if you would like to verbalize it to Will and myself. I guess while people are kind of figuring out what perfect questions, uh, or not perfect, what questions they have to ask, I'm just going to do a quick plug-in. Um, on, we have our, our upcoming webinar, Will had mentioned on talking about uh, making your business plan, making sure you're not using Charmin. Uh, but we do have a class uh, in November on how to write your business plan. And I'd love to uh, meet you all in person there. And it looks like we do have a question. Um, Aliyah, I've just unmuted you. You're more than welcome to talk if you want to unmute yourself. Great. Hi, yes. Can you hear me? I can. Awesome, awesome. Well, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for hosting this call. Um, I, I was able to, you know, grasp a lot of new things. Uh, the question that I have is, you know, when starting out, um, I'm an entrepreneur. And so when starting out trying to, you know, get contacts and prospects um, and, you know, looking for different venues and spaces to host different meetings, um, do you guys have any resources that you would refer to to go to to start looking for those available spaces um, especially if you're new to the area you know one of the great places is uh the champagne public library shameful plug you see that? Uh, <laughs> and, the, and the reason why is particularly for meeting space it's a professional environment um and i know that that's that's critical when you're starting up um i've used um you know, office spaces. There are places around that have small office spaces, but you're talking about, you know, I, I used to um, go to Logic uh, when they first opened. Um, you know, I've gone to, uh, I try to go to the, to the free stuff a lot. So, you know, and then I try to, you know, grow out, like say for instance, I know that Marketplace Mall, there's some entrepreneurs there um, that, 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 you know, they have small booths. You can go to, um, like you said, you were new in town, um, the farmer's market. That was a great place, depending on the type of product that you're selling. I know that I did talk a lot about the finer details of like what happens when you're setting up, um, um, you know, what type of requirements, like if you're selling food and things like that, they do have some things that you have to, you know, be in, in, in line with. 
But those are places that, and I just do like little, you know, you can check uh, search websites like Champagne Public Library, Champagne, Champagne Moms. They are good at posting stuff. Buy Black Champagne is good at posting different things where you can learn stuff. Um, and then uh, Champaign County Chamber of Commerce, good at posting stuff. Economic Development Corporation is good at posting stuff. Um, just checking their websites out and then visit um, uh, Champaign County is a great place where you can find information about where small businesses go to be able to to be able to get some awareness. And like I said, there's some other things that you can do on your Facebook page and stuff like that. But those are some quick thoughts. Yeah, yeah, that I can't add um, anything besides, um, especially if you are new to the area, there is, uh, so Champaign County Tourism and the EDC have um, Welcome to Shambana. So you can actually meet with uh, local uh, just residents and they actually pair you with people who you're similar to and it's a great way of kind of getting yourself a foot in the door. Um, but yeah, I shared a couple of links from what Will had mentioned. Um, and if you have any other questions about our meeting rooms, I really encourage you to give us a call. Um, at 403-2000-217. Um, I did a lot of meetings in, uh, at the Champaign Public Library uh, specifically. Um, like I said, you can do, um, there are some strategies you can do with uh, paid advertising, you know, Facebook. Um, the thing about it is just making sure, you, a lot of times people, you're just making sure you're getting your money's worth. And the, the key to, like Facebook ads and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff is really targeting your, when you're setting up that ad, um, really setting it up where you're targeting an audience. Um, I know this sounds old school, but people do go door to door and set for the sign that, you know, says no soliciting. That's old school, but it still works because people are still in a world that we're basically plugged into this. People actually do value interaction. Awesome. Did that help? I'm going to. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm actually just going through all the links right now and saving them. But oh. thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And so we have another question. Um, how do you hire or retain employees? We have found people want more money and we start at $11,150 gross a week. Wait, you said you start. They, they start at eleven fifty a week, so not like like a one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars a week. It's a trucking company. Oh, I was like, man, you started eleven thousand dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty nice. <laughs> but that, I'm, that I'm not gonna lie, that has been challenging for a lot of people, even in jobs um, that the market. I mean that I thought were pretty good paying jobs are finding challenges in the market. Um, I think that, that, that you can obviously do what you've always done and um, um, probably go to the uh, unemployment agencies and work with them. You can, uh, I know schools are starting to, well, you're trucking. So, you know, you obviously have to have um, driver's license and things like that. But a great idea would be to go to you know, like the Parkland where people are getting their CDL licenses and partner and just talking to the instructor because that's a great in, that's a great incentive for the students to do well if they know that they're going to be able to to get a job afterwards, which is you can have the license, but you kind of need the job after the license. So working with the uh, I know again Parkland's got a great uh, workforce center and working with them to be able to um, to get employees. I know I'm figuring you're talking about long-term employees, particularly in the trucking industry and just stay faithful because that's definitely a challenging, um, the trucking industry as a whole and people as a whole have really faced some challenges, uh, getting and retaining employees. Now what getting employees now, once you get them being, um, at the best that you can as an employer, again, we talked about that employer employee relationship. And sometimes when you, even when you're the best, Sometimes people decide to, to go elsewhere. So I get that and understand that. But I know that's where I would start or continue if you've already went down that route and be patient. It's, you know, a, a superstar employee. There's a reason why they put super and star in front of them because, you know, um, it, it may take some time. 
But that that's where I would go with that. And um, Bart, you had asked the question, do you want me to unmute you so you can kind of add on to any of what Will said? You're welcome to unmute at any time. All right, I kind of, oh, I don't know if it worked. Um, cool. Well, if you want to add any additional questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. I should have typed my contact information. How about that? I did. Yeah, how do we get a hold of you, Will? How do we maybe join the Black Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, let me stop my screen share real quick and then enter into the chat. I'll enter in my email. And I am an open book. I love talking about business and just talking about it from not the, even just a um, talking about it from not just from a theory standpoint. That's why I tried to make the presentation where there were personal things that um, that we went through as business owners. Um, and I think that, you know, like you said, uh, we're in a phase of, of, you know, I think a lot of companies now are trying to build their own employees to that question that was asked. And that's what it used to be. You go down to the, you know, work net or whatever the case may be, but really trying to as much as possible, um, homegrown, kind of grow your employees a lot of times. Now that takes a lot of patience, you know, especially if you're talking from a younger population, um, you know, somebody just getting on the job scene, it takes patience and it takes work no matter what. But I found that, um, you know, um, you treat people well and most of the time people treat you well back, even if it's not a good fit, you know, they respect, they, they show respect even on the way out. You know, there are times in business that are, are rough and, you know, you, you know, as the saying goes, you can't please everyone, but, you know, um, I just believe as God would have it, that that's the way to go. And I, that's what I've, you know, heard from a lot of people that they're really trying to grow their own employees, give them a start. And then, you know, as the business grows, give them an incentive to stay, you know? So maybe you start off at 1150 and your business grows to a point where you can offer more Then, if you can offer more, offer more, you know? Yeah, thank you for that. Great. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. So I would love to encourage everyone to reach out to Will if you have any further questions. I mean, let's utilize this open book. <laughs> it's being yeah. presented <laughs> Um, and we typed his email in there, but also everyone who attended this evening's webinar, I did record it and I will send you um, essentially a copy of this um, on our YouTube channel. And then I'll also send um, some of the slides and Will's contact information. And I also might send a couple of the resources that Will had mentioned um, as far as kind of where to start going to learn more about stuff in the community um, and meeting rooms. But I don't think we have any other questions. So a huge round of applause for Will again, standing ovation for me. Um, thank you. Yeah, so much. Write these down. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for sharing your experience, your expertise, um, just all of it. It was really wonderful kind of hearing your perspective and learning more about small business 101. Yeah. So, a little bit of 101, 200, 300. 400 and so on, but I guess I would be remiss if I spent a lot of time praying. There are times when things don't go, I mean, we talk about perfect scenarios in business all the time, and as be encouraged, everyone, especially when you're starting off the ground, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I will tell you that, 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 that things come up all the time. Every year, maybe every month, there's something that's challenging. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't say, I'm not telling what you all what to believe, but I would be remiss in saying that without God, I just, just would, would fall apart. But you got to, you just, you just got to stay encouraged, definitely stay encouraged. And if there's anything that I can offer, you know, pieces of advice, 
Uh, as Madeline said, as I said, please feel free to contact me. Yeah, and we got one more question came in. Is there a fee to join the Chamber of Commerce? And I'm going to assume they're asking about the Black Chamber of Commerce, but I do know there is a fee associated with the um, Champaign County Chamber of Commerce. There is um, a fee to join. Um, uh, a lot of times we like to sit down and talk to the business owner before just because we want to make sure it's a good fit and the expectations are the right thing. But there are a lot of, if you're not at a stage where you can um, uh, pay a fee, one of the strategies that you could do is number one, there's a lot of free information put out. We put free information out all the time. And I forgot to take talk about it in my presentation, but uh, uh, use the free stuff. And if you, we, you know, sit down and say, Hey, I want to be a member that might be something for you, then, you know, and we would love to, to do that as well. But we want to make sure that, that that business owner is really getting their needs and that we can deliver. So mm -hmm. that's what I would say about that. Yeah, that's incredible. I think, yeah, the value of having that one-on-one -on -one and also the resources sounds pretty great. Awesome. Uh, any other questions, last minutes that we have? All right. I'm double, double checking my open questions, but I think we're all set. Well, well, thank you again for joining us tonight. I know you're on Eastern time at the moment, traveling for work, but um, thank you again for coming in and sharing your knowledge with us. We really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to uh, sit down and enjoy a great presentation. Thank you all. You all have a blessed one. Great. Have a good evening. Thank you.